Hey, welcome back. It's Terrific Tuesday. Um, you're watching Liquid Lunch on Biz TV. Lots going on that you need to know about. And, uh, you know, I know this is a national show, and we spend a lot of time almost every single day going to 40 million homes in America, talking about national issues. Every so often, local issues here turn into national news. This is one of those times, okay? So uh, I want to put this out there and make everyone understand um, there are two members of the Saturday Night Live cast who are residents of our proud borough here, Staten Island, New York. Um, both of these cast members are young men who portend to be comics or comedians. And um, they both live in quite affluent neighborhoods. Uh, Toad Hill is one of the uh, richest enclaves in New York. And uh, the other one lives in the South Shore somewhere in an undisclosed location. But uh, from what I understand, quite the affluent neighborhood himself. So um, we have the king of New York State, Andrew Cuomo, who's crushing the little man. We have the emperor of New York City, Bill de Blasio, who's teaming up with his partner to crush the little man. And then um, we have the king of Staten Island, or so he calls himself, Peter Davidson, who actually used to be one of my interns and employees years ago when he, I thought he was a good kid. Um, we have him and Colin Jost going on Saturday Night Live and literally mocking the little man. And uh, it, they caught up with them yesterday when the national press started asking me questions about them. Um, and then I guess, you know, Pete thought it was okay to rip Staten Island or something like that. So, um, you know, Pete Davidson said we're a bunch of babies. Is that what we are, a bunch of babies? Maybe Staten Island are, are a bunch of peaceful protesters. Maybe they care about people like Keith and Dan. Maybe they care about um, the families that own places like Home Bra or Richmond Republic or District or Joyce's uh, O'Toole's Tavern uh, or, or W's, the Wants's. Maybe the governor and the king of Staten Island should care about them, I think, you know, and um, yesterday, I guess, somehow or another, even I uh, hit the headlines with the uh, Hollywood favorite TMZ um, started a little kerfuffle between uh, me, Colin Jost and Pete Davidson. And, uh, you know, they came out with this headline, which I, I think it's kind of funny if, if you think about it, because here you have these rich millionaires, okay? Now, their show Saturday Night Live, they actually found a little bit of a loophole where they have a live audience and they have the staff members and the cast members there because they're a live show, I guess, they're broadcast, and they paid the audience members as extras. So it became like a reality show. So then I start thinking, wait a minute we may be able to do the same thing at max because if it's good for the king, it's supposed to be good for the peasants or good for the goose, good for the gander, whatever, however you want to look at it. But um, we're working our way through. I'm talking to my lawyers. I got the best lawyers around, Lou Gelmino, Mark Fonti. They're representing all the restaurant association owners here in Staten Island. Um, they're representing Keith and Dan. Um, Lou's representing Dan now as he takes on the long arm of the government. Um, we're still waiting for a report from the sheriff because the sheriff here in New York City the other night put out a message that a officer was down with two broken legs. And as we sit here on Tuesday afternoon, no evidence yet of any broken legs. So why were they here? Who sent them? Why didn't they identify themselves as police? Why did they clean up the crime scene within seven minutes? Why did they say a deputy was down with two broken legs? And the whole thing starts to stink across the board. And if you want to know what's really happening, maybe if you get on an airplane, you're sitting literally one foot away from someone. And even if you buy the middle seat because they're cheap, you're sitting literally three feet away from someone. And these flights are back. Three minutes. The airlines got bailout money. Okay. And the travel and the, and the hotel and the cruise lines, they got bailout money. But the voice of the little people is not heard because it just pops up in spots all over the place. And there's not one consolidated voice. 
there's not a rabble rouser that gets out there and says, hey, let's all get together and bring the silent majority forward. We found out that there were a couple guys who wanted to stand up and be first. You know, yesterday we mourned the death of Chuck Yeager. Chuck Yeager was a distinguished Air Force, Air Force fighter pilot, spent 35 years in the military, three different combat tours and three different wars. And Chuck Yeager is remembered most for breaking the speed of sound on land. And Chuck died yesterday. And a lot of times when my entrepreneurial spirit is going, I know all my friends out there, many of you are entrepreneurs and small business people. And I always want to try to get a flag in the ground if I have an idea on being first at something. Because if you know you're first categorically and you stick a flag in the ground, then no one can ever take first away from you. They may do what you did again, but they'll do it second or third. And when I am working with younger companies or kids that I mentor or try to help with their businesses, and I go, well, let's just, let's just roll it out. And even if it's broke, we'll figure it out and we'll fix it as we go along. And they don't understand it. Well, well eh, maybe we should wait a week or two weeks and then we'll be it. And I always say to them, it's one of my kind of things in mentoring, like um, who was the second person to break the speed of sound? And no one could ever answer that question. And that's because people don't remember the second or one the minute. rest. They remember the first and they remember the best. So if you don't think you can get to the best, you, maybe you can't. Um, but you can get to first and first doesn't have to be perfect. And you know what? The first guys to stand up and say, we're not going to sit here anymore and be subject to these arbitrary rules were the owners of Max Pub. And the owners of Max Pub were first and no one could take that away from them. And you 30. know what the government wants to do. What was that, Mikey? Seconds left. Okay. You know what the government wants to do? When they see the oppressed people start to rise up, when they see an uprising, when they see someone being the titular head, the tip of the spear of that, Wrap it up. what they want to do is quell that opposition. They want to smush it into the ground. And what they're doing to Keith and Dan is exactly that. They're trying to pulverize them to a point where they lose their will to fight. And they're no longer losing their will to fight. And I think many people across this country are becoming inspired by seeing two small businessmen in Staten Island who weren't trying to be the leaders of some resistance um, actually taking it on the chin, but going straight forward and trying harder and harder to continue to bring uh, a voice to the voiceless. And I got a couple ideas that we're really going to probably get under this governor and mayor's skin over the next few days. And quite frankly, I got to tell you, Andrew Cuomo and Mayor de Blasio went out yesterday and started making all kinds of statements. Um, they got another one.